What's going on you guys? My name is Bryce. Today we're talking about how to fix the error that you get sometimes in WordPress where it says error establishing a database connection. Now, this is not as hard to solve as you might think. Oftentimes this happens very frequently when you've just moved a WordPress website, you've migrated a WordPress website, um, and, and it, it occurs more often than you think, but like I said, it's really easy to solve. So looking at my screen here, we can see th this is the error. It looks a little bit different depending on the WordPress version that you have, but for the most part, it'll say error establishing a database connection. Now, nine times out of 10, whenever I see this error message, the very first thing that I think of is the WP config file. The WP config file is a file located inside of our home directory where our WordPress website lives. And that's a file that contains all of the database connection settings. It's got the, the name of the database, the name of the user. It also has the password that you have to use to connect to the database. So there's a lot of different variables in there. And oftentimes, like I said, nine times out of 10, there's something wrong with that file, and that's what's giving you this error message. So let me uh, let me close out of some of these. Actually, the very first thing that you're gonna do is so so say say you're on this screen. What you can do is you can go to your cPanel. So you'll go to your website URL, and at the end of it, you'll put forward slash cPanel and hit enter. Then you'll come to this screen. It'll ask you to log in. I'll go ahead and log in. And then we're logged into our cPanel. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to the file manager, and then we're gonna to go to the public HTML folder, and then a little bit down, you'll see this WP config file. This is the file I was talking about that has all of that information. So if I come in here and say edit, if I scroll down, you can see right here, it says DB name, DB user, DB password, DB host, and also a little bit further down here, it'll show table prefix. So these are all things that we need to check and make sure are set correctly to verify that everything in WordPress can talk like it's supposed to. So let's let's first, let's go and look at our databases. And the way we can do that is we can come down here and we can go and look at MySQL databases. Now, if I come down here, it'll say current databases and it'll say the name of the database right here. So for obviously the, the purpose of this video, it's Bryce Demo underscore WP908. If I come back to our WP config file, we can see Bryce Demo underscore WP908 is for the database name. That means everything is good and set with the name of the database. There's no misspellings, there's no typos. The name of the database is correct. The next thing we need to do is check the database user. We can do that at the exact same spot. If we come down here, we can also see current users is Bryce Demo WP 908. Okay, if I come back and verify, great, Bryce Demo underscore WP 908. So that user exists. And now the next thing is database password, database host, and also the database table prefix. So let's go and check those. Um, I'm gonna skip the password for now. The database host, local host just means the database and the WordPress files are located on the same server. Nine times out of 10, if you're using any kind of standard hosting like uh, HostGator, GoDaddy, Bluehost, um, A2 hosting, that's what I use. Um, nine times out of 10, you're going to keep your WordPress website on the same server as your database. And so most of the time you can leave this as local host. If your WordPress files are on a different server than the, the database, then you need to connect these two, but that's kind of out of the scope of this video. But for the most part, local host should be fine. Let's also check the table prefix. The easiest way to do this is go back to cPanel and let's also go to PHP My Admin. Now PHP My Admin is just a tool that allows you to, to interact with the database in a graphical way. You can get really complicated and go in the command line, not really confusing. It's really not worth it. So here we can see again the name of our database. If I expand this out, you'll see that all of my tables are WPSW underscore. And then whatever the name of the table is, we've got options, posts, terms, users. If we look at the WP config file, our table prefix is WPSW, which is exactly the same as WPSW underscore. So the table prefix is fine because it's using the same prefix that my database is also using. Okay, so let's say for the purpose of this video, everything is messed up. 
all of these values are different than what you're actually seeing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mess these up really good and I'll do uh, you know, localhost and then WPSW we'll say four, and we're gonna save these changes. Now that just messed things up royally. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to show you guys how to fix each and every one of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on the WP config and we're gonna go edit. Now, like I said before, we're gonna go and look for the database name, which I already showed you. So we can go to uh, the databases section within cPanel and we can see current databases. This is the name of the current database. So I'm just gonna highlight and copy that we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna paste it right in here and go paste and say save changes. Now what you can do is you can go back to your website and see if that fixed it. In this case, we know that we botched it intentionally, but with every change that you make, I would go back to your website and make sure that that wasn't the change because you may be changing a lot of different things and it may just be one thing that you actually need to change to resolve the problem. So obviously we're still having the error and so it's not the database name. Let's go and check the database user. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to delete this user and we're gonna create a new user from scratch. So I'm gonna go back and what we're gonna do is we're going to scroll down to where it says MySQL users, add new user. I'm gonna say Bryce demo, we'll just say admin. And then the password, we're just gonna say test one, two, three, four and test one, two, three, four. Obviously this is a very weak password, don't do that. Um, most of the time we'll use the password generator. Actually, let's go ahead and use that. We're gonna do this generate password. I'm gonna find one that I like, any of these work, but sometimes I'm kind of weird with my passwords and they have to be kind of like a little bit picky. That's a good looking password. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna say I've copied this to a safe place and I'm gonna say use password. Now, while that's copied to my clipboard, I'm gonna make sure that I come back here and under database password, I'm gonna make sure that I paste this in here inside of the two little tick marks. Those are not included with the password. And I'm gonna click save changes. Now, when I come back, that user is not made yet, but I just wanted to make sure that I didn't lose that password. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say create user. I'm gonna say go back. Okay, so if I scroll down, we now have the Bryce demo admin user. So I need to come back here and I need to go to the database user and say Bryce demo underscore admin. I'm gonna say save changes. Now again, if I come back to my website and I refresh, there's still going to be an error with the database connection. So what exactly is it? We've got the database name, the user, the password, host should be set correctly. We know that our table prefix, we need to fix this. That's correct. If I come back and refresh, we're still gonna have an error. Refresh error still exists. So what we need to do is we've already created the database user. The problem though, is that the user doesn't have any permissions. You can create a thousand users, but if they don't have keys to do what they need to do, they're not gonna have access to connect your website to the actual database. So how to fix that, we come back here, we'll scroll down and we're gonna see this section that says add user to database. So we know that our user is Bryce demo underscore admin. That's the one that we created and the database is correct. And we're going to say add. So that's now giving the Bryce demo underscore admin account permissions to the database. Now this too is where things get a little bit tricky. Uh, we can assign different privileges. Most of the time, I'd say all privileges. If this is the account that's controlling WordPress, you wanna give it access to do everything that it needs. This gives us access to create new entries in the database, to delete entries in the database, insert new entries into the database, everything that you need to do with WordPress. If your user doesn't have access to the things it needs to do in the database, you're gonna run into issues. So I'm gonna say make changes. We'll see it's a success. And now I can say go back. Now, if we go back to the WP config file, we should have everything set. We've got our database name, which should be correct. The user is correct. And the database password should be correct. We know for a fact that our WordPress, our files are on the same server as our database. And also we know that the database table prefix is also correct. So if we come back here to the database error, refresh, if we did everything right, 
we should not have that error any longer. So again, just recapping, that's a lot of steps. I promise you it's not that difficult. Um, but when you see that error message that says error establishing a database connection, there's about four things you need to check. You need to make sure that the database exists. You also need to make sure that there's data inside the database. It can't just be an empty database. You need to make sure that the user and the password are correct, the table prefix is correct, and also that the user has the right permissions to use that database. That's a lot of steps, but again, if you're confused, pause, rewind, go back, and you should be able to fix that error. Okay, that should do it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you next week.